Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at an Esper Legends deck featuring three copies of Arata Drambic of Urborg, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4 mana 3 3 legendary zombie wizard with vigilance and ward 2, saying other zombies we control have vigilance, and whenever another legendary creature we control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it's a 2 2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. So Rata Drabic can protect our other legendaries by turning them into 2-2 zombies, still keeping all of their abilities, including potential ETB effects, and in the case of a card like Shieldred for instance, being a 2-2 death touch with all these abilities is not a huge difference from a 4-5 death touch that drains the opponent for 2 whenever they draw a card, and gains us 2 life whenever we draw a card, Shieldred another amazing addition from Dominary United, quickly becoming a staple in standard as well. And then we're also playing three copies of Ertai Resurrected, a 4 mana 3 2 with Flash, that when it enters, can either counter a spell activated ability or triggered ability, or destroy another creature or planeswalker, and its controller can each time draw a card. So it does give the opponent a card in return, but we're still adding to the board, maybe countering a key spell or destroying an annoying creature. And Ertai also has great synergy with Rata Drabic. If it comes back, it can once again kill a creature, potentially even killing our own creatures to draw a card. So that that's another neat synergy with Ertai. And then at 5 mana we're playing 3 copies of Lisa Forgotten Archangel, a 4-5 with Flying and Lifelink, saying whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step, and if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. So if we can get both Lisa and Tarata Drabic in play at the same time, it becomes very difficult for the opponent to remove any of our creatures unless they can exile them between the recursion from Rata Drabic making a 2-2 zombie, as well as Lisa returning that same legendary back to our hand so we can keep replaying them over and over again. Then another very important card that kind of ties the whole deck together is Rafine Scheming Seer, a 1-4 flyer with Ward 1, saying whenever we attack, target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of attacking creatures. So when we connive, we draw and discard, and if we discard a non-land card, we can add a plus one counter to a creature. So Rafine not only adds extra counters to the team, but also helps us discard additional legendaries that we maybe already have in play. Now that being said, it can still be beneficial to play the same legendary that's already on the battlefield if we control Rata Drabic, that way we still get to make an extra token that's no longer legendary, so that's one way to potentially control two copies of Shieldred for instance, which can also quickly add up. And then another card that synergizes very nicely with Rafine is Adlin, Resplendent Cathar, which makes 1-1 one, one humans whenever we attack, and also grows the more creatures we control, so we can very quickly go wide, but also potentially get a ton of counters from Rafine if we're attacking with a ton of those tokens, and the token we get from Adlin also counts towards the connive from Rafine, so that's important to keep in mind. And then we've got some new additions at 2 mana as well, with the Sadistic Pilgrim, a 2-2 with Death Touch, saying whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we get to gain one life, and whenever another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life. So great synergy with cards like Adlin, even if the 1-1 token dies, it still gained us one life and drained the opponent for one, and also just a fine 2-drop with Death Touch that can often attack unopposed in the early turns to enable the connive on Rafine. And then we're playing two copies of Jadar, which lines up quite nicely against Liliana of the Veil's minus two ability, making us sacrifice a creature, as we can now easily sacrifice the 2-2 Decayed Zombie that Jadar makes each turn. And then we're also playing the full set of Denik, a 2-3 with a lifelink, saying cards in graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities, good against reanimation decks, but also against cards like Graveyard Trespasser, which no longer will be able to exile creatures to drain us. And we can also replay Denik out of our graveyard for 4 mana, thanks to Disturb, in which case it enters as the Pious Apparition, a 3-2 flyer, saying whenever one or more creature cards are put into graveyards from anywhere, we get to investigate, meaning we get to make a clue token that for 2 mana can be sacrificed to draw a card, so this can provide a bit of extra card advantage, only triggers once each turn, and when the Pious Apparition would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, it does get exiled instead. So Denik has awesome synergy with Rafine, because we don't really mind discarding it to the connive ability, as we'll still be able to play Pious Apparition out of the graveyard, and once Pious Apparition is in play and we discard additional creatures to connive, we'll be able to make a clue token with the Pious Apparition as well. 
And then we're also playing 4 copies of Thalia, a 2-1 first rank, making non-creature spells one more expensive for both players, but we don't have any non-creature spells ourselves, so it's only going to be taxing the opponent. And then we're also playing a 1-off copy of Geralf, Visionary Stitcher, a 1-4 saying a zombies we control have flying, which can be relevant with the Decayed zombie tokens, as well as the tokens we get from Rata Drabic. And then for blue mana we can tap and sacrifice another non-token creature to create an XX blue zombie creature token, where X is the sacrificed creature's toughness. So that's another way of making zombies, and it also plays nicely alongside Rata Drabic or Lisa, as we'll be able to get those creatures back anyway. And then our mana base also has a few goodies with a full set of Plaza of Heroes, which is part of what enables this three color mana base, as it will make one mana of any color to spend on legendaries, or we can make one mana of any color among legendary permanents we already control. And for a three mana, we can also exile it, and then a target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn, so it can protect one of our key creatures from removal. Then we've got a Rafine's Tower, can be cycled in the late game to draw a card. Then we've got some dual lands for mana fixing, and then the channel lands from Kamigawa are awesome in this deck, which is also why I'm playing at two copies of Iganjo, which I usually don't do, since these can be channeled in the case of Iganjo for just a single white if we control two or more legendary creatures to deal four damage to an attack or blocking creature. So this is very efficient if you can keep up just a single white mana for a removal spell that doesn't even get taxed by Rowan Thalia, so it gets around that as well. And then a Soaring City can be a bounce spell, and Abandoned Mire can get something back from our graveyard, and it also plays around Danix ability, because we're not actually targeting anything with Abandoned Mire, so that's another neat synergy there. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit slow to get going without a 2-drop, but the sequence of Rafine or Adeline into our 4-drop should be pretty good. So we'll give it a try. And there's our 2-drop. So now we get to curve out nicely. Probably gonna hang on to Iganjo. Play the Sadistic Pilgrim which also pairs very nicely with Adeline. Opponent on a green-white deck. Maybe splashing blue. And we'll take two damage. And then if we can get immediate value from Adeline and keep our token, that's usually worth it. And then next turn we can set up Rotodrabic. Opponent may be holding a Wandering Emperor, which can exile our tapped Pilgrim. Won't be able to deal with Adlin very easily. So yeah, if the adversary attacks implies Wandering Emperor to put a plus one counter on it. So we'll play around it. And Thalia is an excellent way to do so. We'll force him to play it right away. Alternatively, I can still play Rata Drabic, just attack with Adlin and uh, I guess a token. That could also work. Sure. We'll try that instead. And then our zombie tokens will also gain Vigilance eventually, which also plays around Wandering Emperor nicely. That's gonna be March exiling Adlin. That's too bad. Do I still want to attack with the Sadistic Pilgrim? Probably keep it back now. And then next turn we could double spell Thalia and Rafine. It's gonna be an Elspeth at 5. I won't let a few thugs threaten this city. Show them what Giving Adversary Flying perhaps? Nope, just first strike. Also pretty good. And uh, yeah, let's see here. Could also play Rafine, and then Iganjo we can use for very cheap, so we don't have to play Thalia necessarily. And then move to combats, and maybe send everyone at Elspeth, and we can put counters on the 1-1, one -one and then still have Iganjo left over. Discarding, let's see, our 4-drop, and then a plaza can go, 
and maybe at this point Thalia is not the most impactful creature. Opponent lining up their blocks. And we get to channel. You can't just push me around like the others. And this now has Vigilance, which is a slight upgrade. Lisa's gonna be pretty awesome too. Elspeth minuses. Retreat isn't a I've made plenty of connections. Still not sure what the blue is for. Finds a loam speaker. Okay, play Lisa. And then we're pretty sure that our opponent's holding a Wandering Emperor still. So I may not want to attack with anything that doesn't have Vigilance. Although I guess a token's not the end of the world if it dies. So we'll send these three. And put counters on... Maybe Ratadrabic himself. But I'll probably only discard the one land, and our opponent knows we're playing around Wandering Emperor. Doesn't have a great way out and scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's quite promising if we can pick up another land ideally untapped on turn 2. But I think it's still a keep overall. Got the synergy of uh, Jadar giving our zombies flying with Geralf. And there we go, perfect. Now against a Naya deck. Could also go with a Thalia first. Opponent might have some non-creature spells that we can tax and then curving into Rafine is pretty powerful. Ooh, Adlin might be even better, honestly. It's hard to say, they're both great. A nice aggressive start, and then next turn, Rafine with the tokens from Adlin can put a ton of counters on our creatures as well. We're unaffected by Thalia. Opponent on a multicolor deck here, so it could be sort of a domain control strategy, which could easily have some board wipes. Rafine sees a leyline binding response on Thalia. And then next turn we could see the Sweeper giving minus one for each land type. Which at this point wouldn't be surprised if it's gonna give our creatures uh, minus six, minus six. So two counters on Adlin may not even be enough. But three counters might be. So Ratadrabic can discard Danik and get value out of the graveyard. And then maybe one more Rotodrabic can go. Sure. So now Adlin can survive the uh, drag sweeper. Yep. Perfect. And then can we close out the game here? Jadar says at the beginning of end step make a token, so it's not gonna grow Adlin twice. So in that case, maybe just go Ratadrabic to protect Adlin and attack. I guess never mind, we could have played both two drops and that still would have been just enough here. Oh well, Ponon gets one more turn. But a Sphinx is not gonna save them. Alright, sweet. So yeah, we get to attack for the win here. And opponent had a pretty functional draw, but a turn to Thalia into Adelin was just too much pressure. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is quite promising. Turn to either Thalia or Pilgrim into Rafine. And Rafine also just excellent for not only outputting more damage, but also getting rid of additional legendaries we already have in hand. Against Curtains. Pilgrim means we can attack past it more easily. 
So that might be the play. Thalia can maybe punish removal spells a bit better, making them more expensive. And I guess next turn we are planning to maybe play Rafine, which can already put a counter on Thalia, still not quite enough to get past Curtains. So we'll try a Pilgrim here first. Another Curtains. And a cut down kills our two drop. So a little bit hesitant to play Rafine into what could be a Liliana on turn 3, but otherwise they can also make us discard it, so I'll play Rafine and then next turn we can maybe double spell. Alright, opponent's gonna have a look with the curtains. Probably takes Rantadrabic or Thalia if they deem that to be a bigger problem. Get a replacement, Denik. Okay, well, let's give uh, Rata Drombic a shot here. And then discard Beach. Cut down plus tanks. Still results in a replacement zombie. And curtains attacks as a 3 4. We'll take it. Shieldred's great too. Okay, let's uh, shield it first. And then attack. And then we'll grow probably Ratadrabic here to get past the curtains. Discard Denik for value. Maybe even times two. Great synergy with Shieldred as well, gaining extra life. And I'll play a Plaza. Opponent's down to ten. We can survive a Meat Hook Massacre pretty easily. Invoke Despair is not bad, but we can uh, sacrifice Shieldred here and get a replacement in zombie form. That's probably acceptable. Now, interestingly, Shieldred wasn't in play when our opponent drew, so it didn't deal them the extra damage, which we could have avoided by sacrificing Rafine. But our opponent is still incredibly far behind here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little bit heavy on the Adelans here. No two drop. I think we'll have to mulligan sadly. This is potentially better. Still need a third land eventually, but uh, Sadistic Pilgrim into Adelans, a good start. And then either bottom Lisa or Ertai. We'll keep Lisa. Adversary on two. And there's our third lane, so we get to curve out with Adlin first into probably Rafine next turn. Opponent accepts the trade. Hope to dodge a Brutal Cathar. It's gonna be an Extraction Specialist getting back Adversary, still pretty powerful here. Okay, well, I'll play Rafine and attack with the team, since we're going to get an extra 1-1 anyways, might as well. And then maybe grow one of the tokens as well. The author is still going to get eaten by the specialist, most likely. And what do we get rid of? Denik is good value to discard. And then Thalia is probably not the best in this matchup, as her opponent's mostly a creature deck. And... Uh, Maybe one land can go as well. Put 
Going on Teats 1 1 gains 3, takes 7. And we get to play land for the turn. So next turn we can maybe play Elisa. If not, Aranta Drambic still gonna be pretty decent. Alright, Peacekeeper gonna have a look. Fail case, we can also replay Danik from the graveyard. Name's Lisa. And yeah, the Pious Apparition also great synergy with Rafine. So, yeah, that might be the play here. Get an extra flyer going as well. And then Rafine. Token and probably Adlin gets to attack as well. Adlin's gonna go up to 5 power here. Opponent could double block Adlin regardless of us maybe putting a couple more counters on it. Unless we want to put 3 more counters on it. Which is also an option. Alright, fine. Okay, so Thalia can go. Pilgrim. And then I would need to put one more non-land card in the graveyard to grow it up to 7 toughness. Which I guess means maybe discarding Ratadrabic or just getting rid of Lisa. Although they're pretty likely to trade off Peacekeeper, in which case we'll be able to um, play Elisa for 5 mana again. So let go for Atadrabic, and then a land as well. We get to make our clue token, so that's another option for next turn. And play land. Adversary pumping the team, presumably. They don't have any good attacks into Adlin. Opponent passes, and our flyers might just be able to close out the game here. Although, that being said, Adlin making attacking tokens could be kind of awkward in the face of a bunch of large lifelinking creatures on the other side. So it wasn't necessarily game over yet, but we were definitely in a commanding position. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands could use an extra land or two, especially untapped ones. For now, we can maybe play Jadar or Thalia. And then, um, yeah, Adlin on three would be powerful, followed by maybe a Shieldred. I'll try it. On the draw, we're pretty likely to pick up a land. Opponent's Naya Colors. Sadly, no untapped land on turn 2 here, so we'll have to wait one more turn to get a creature down. And Cathartic Pyre points towards a reanimator deck. Elder Dragon War, another new tool for reanimator decks potentially too. So could see an Invoke Justice, but our opponent also missing their land drop. So do we want to just play Adlin here, or Thalia could punish a lot of their non-creature spells? If for a point to reanimator deck, I can easily see them having a bunch of uh, non-creatures in hand, including some sagas. And once again, no play. And we could either play Adlin or Shieldred. I think I'll go with Shieldred here. Opponent jumps Thalia. And Cathartic Fire taking out Thalia. So they can maybe play their three mana sagas now. And Restoration gonna be the first one. Okay. So yeah, Invoke Justice might not be too far in our future. Can maybe counter it with Urtai just to keep up the pressure. Or I can play Thalia plus I guess we don't have enough white for Adlin. So that's unfortunate. I think in that case, maybe Thalia plus Jadar is good enough. And we'll save this for next turn. Opponent is down to 12. 
This cards invoke justice, so they definitely have a few in hand. Shieldred punishes companion, drawing a card down to 10. And Wandering Emperor can exile Shieldred. But it's going to be vulnerable on the way back. So it might be time to keep up our counterspell here. And uh, take out Emperor, hit the opponent for 4. Now this will transform. So our opponent is going to have some blockers available. But step 1 is preventing an Invoke Justice. Opponent passes. Alright, so... If they're not doing anything, I guess we'll just kill the 3-4 end of turn. But it might have another Wandering Emperor to flash in. Could have also killed their own zombie token to draw. But the 3-4 is pretty annoying. Okay. So how about... Pilgrim into Adlin. Attack with the team. Maybe Jadar does not want to attack here into the Spirited Companion, although that's also a close call since it would still trigger Pilgrim. I'll try this. Right, there's Wandering Emperor as we suspected. Minus is on our 3-2. And then Token can go after Emperor. They might have wanted to wait for us to get the Token before flashing in their Planeswalker. Emperor down. And Pilgrim, great synergy with Jadar as well. Alright, probably gonna see Invoke Justice now, or maybe some other sweeper. Although the Pilgrim at least can drain the opponents. So Elder Dragon War kills four creatures, putting the opponent to one. And we still have an Adlin that can attack here, which should be able to cross a finish line. Awesome, so close game here against a red-white Invoke Justice deck. Had a nice bit of early disruption with Thalia, despite kind of a slower start on our side. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keepable hand. Turn two, what to play is a question. Could go for Jadar to set up Rafine a little bit better. Although we'll see what our opponent's up to here. Turn one Swamp. And Jadar would also help against turn 3 Liliana. As her opponents get to turn 2 Underdog. Yeah, we'll play Jadar. Take 3. Do we see Trespasser perhaps? Meet with Massacre for 1, killing Jadar. So her opponents on a slightly more controlling build. So not quite playing all the one drops. Now we'll keep our zombie token around to protect against uh, Liliana. And then for now, could play Rafine, even though it can get cut down. Or I could play, let's say, the Sadistic Pilgrim and pass. I think I'll still go for Rafine. And hope they don't have a spot removal spell in hand, but uh, next turn we'll be able to double spell more easily. Right, it's going to be a Trespasser now. Seraphine survives. Can block Underdog as well. And now Pilgrim into Denik might be the play. But could attack with Rafine first and see what's up. And do I want to discard a non-land card? We are flooding a little bit if I do, so I probably want to just get rid of a tower here. Or maybe even a caves, if we end up cycling it. Pilgrim into Denik. Could have also discarded Denik to then replay the Pious Apparition out of the graveyard. 
but uh, we would have to immediately get it back, otherwise Trespasser becomes a problem. And yeah, Trespasser also doesn't work with our apprentice in play. So I could trade my Pilgrim for Trespasser. And then probably take three from Underdog. And Shieldred shows up. We could kill her with Ertai. Or we could maybe try and set up our Iganjo to finish it off, but uh, let's go with Artai. And I don't mind growing the Life Linker, or we could put Rafine out of cut down range by putting more counters on it. Um, another meeting massacre could also be a reason to put more counters on my 2 3. And then now I'll discard an extra Denic and uh, a Sanctum so we can play an extra blue source in case we need it. Underdog attacks. Could trade, could take it so we have an extra creature to enable Rafine. It's going to be an Evolved Sleeper. And another Trespasser, which cannot target anything because of our 2-mana Denic. And then now we could get our Pious Apparition in play. And still have Iganjo available. That way if we discard a creature to Rafine we get an extra clue. And uh, yeah, probably send in everyone but a zombie. And I think we'll grow the life linker some more. Discarding at this point maybe Thalia. Geralf also not super important, I would say. Since we don't have Ratadrabic or Lisa to combo with it. Thalia could still be impactful if our opponent's playing Invoke Despair. But uh, probably prefer the extra counters. And keep Shieldred. Opponent accepts a trade. Don't think I need to use Iganjo, I'll save it. Can maybe kill the Evolved Sleeper if that attacks. Alright, Sleeper 3-3 three, three Death Touch. Opponent's gonna hang back. And now Ratadrabic is awesome. So is Shieldred. So we have some uh, nice options available. I'll go with Ratadrabic. And attack. Zombie has Vigilance, but still want to keep it a Sacrifice Fodder for an Invoke Despair or Liliana. And then we'll start growing Rafine now, I believe. Discard some excess copies. And make another clue. So we're outgrinding the mono black deck, which is nice. Can save Danik with Iganjo. Even though letting the trade happen and getting an extra copy from Ratadrabic would have been fine. Bone falls to seven. Massacre would be for three at this point, which is not very impactful. Could see Invoke Despair, but can easily sacrifice a zombie token. All right, Massacre for three it is. So we should still have enough for lethal here, could play Adlin as well, but just attacking and getting an extra counter would be enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is pretty slow. No two or three mana play, so we're really hoping to draw one of them. But our mana is good, and we've got some powerful four drops. So, really hoping the top decks are kind to us. And we do have quite a few two drops we can draw in the meantime.
opponents green blue and the Rafine I'll happily take. Can play Sanctum Tapped since we don't have anything else going on. And Merge Keeper, okay. So our opponents might be ramping here into maybe a Defiler at 5 mana. And a Reservoir Kraken points towards Fight Rigging. So I could keep up Airtight to potentially counter a Fight Rigging, which is otherwise pretty tough for our deck to beat. Yeah, I guess that's the play. Although playing Shieldred's tempting. Yeah, we'll keep up uh, Resurrected for a turn. And then Rafine can attack, discarding Denik for value. Sure. Right, there's a fight rigging, so let's counter that. Opponent does get to draw, and they still have a Kraken in play. Although I could decide to tap it down if I want to. Which is certainly reasonable. That way we can maybe attack past the 1-1 one -one next turn and get some counters going with Rafine. And a Loam Speaker for more mana. Okay. So I could play Lisa and then attack. Or Shieldreds. Which would then also pair well with Rafine gaining us extra life. I think Lisa, just a more mana-efficient play. And counters on. Probably Rafine at this point. Discarding another Denik and a land. Opponent takes it. Let's hope to dodge a second fight rigging. But at this point, our opponent can just hard cast some big stuff. Kraken can attack, can potentially race with our lifelinkers. Alright, we'll take seven. And the Filer of Vigor, as we suspected. Okay. Well, we have some decent lines available. Could get the Pious Apparition going. Could play Pilgrim plus Shieldred. Ratadrabic, also excellent here. So I guess we'll go Pilgrim plus Ratadrabic. Make sure our creatures can be messed with. With a double protection now from Ratadrabic plus Lisa. And then Ertai is probably fine to attack, because if they kill it, it comes back, killing Defiler. And we'll put counters on Lisa. Keeping a Shieldred in hand. And our opponent falls to one. So I should be able to cross a finish line, especially with a Shieldred as well. But we'll see if our opponent can make a big play here. Maybe the world spell will show up. But nope, our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand just needs to find another land pretty much to curve Danik into Rafine, and we'll be off to the races. There we go, perfect. Opponent with a turn one planes. Green white. See the new Thran portal. Kind of a necessary evil for some two color decks nowadays. And an adversary. Okay, so we can play Rafine. Happy to discard Denik. And we even have a 1 4 to block a 3 1 adversary. So we're curving out beautifully. Could see Brutal Cathar Exile Denik, perhaps. Still doesn't allow them to attack. And then we'll have to watch out for Wandering Emperor at 4 mana, potentially. Exiling our tapped creatures, and yep, there's the Cathar. Alright, so... Could keep up Ertai, could... 
tap out for Ratadrabic and then next turn Lisa. So if they don't have an exile effect, they pretty much can get rid of our creatures. Yeah, that's a close call. Most of their removal will probably be exile based in the form of Brutal Cathar, potentially Wandering Emperor. So Ratadrabic is not necessarily doing a whole lot in this matchup. Could also play Pious Apparition, then attack and uh, get a clue token from maybe discarding Ratadrabic. And especially with two copies now. Opponent will get to attack with Adversary now, potentially, but that's okay. Peacekeeper is going to have a look, probably names Lisa, but then we'll still have some other plays available. Alright, then we can play at 2 mana as well. So, for now, what are we thinking? Could also keep Danik back to block, although that's not the best synergy with Ratadrabic necessarily, since this would get exiled. So maybe the play is just pass with Ertai available, can maybe still attack, and then kill the Peacekeeper to unlock Lisa next turn. Although the downside is Brutal Cathar would transform into a werewolf. So yeah, quite a few options. Maybe we should just start by attacking and seeing what we draw into with Connive. And uh, sure, let's keep up the pressure. And counters on Denik. Shieldred's nice, can discard another Denik. And yeah, maybe Ratadrabic in this matchup. Opponent takes 7. Could also main phase Airtie, but now I'm kind of liking Shieldred instead. Another must answer creature, and in the meantime, we're killing them with our flyers. Alright, there's a Wandering Emperor, can exile either one of our flyers. Goes for Denik. Is what you get but that means no attacks. Okay. Next up, maybe just make another Pious Apparition. Take out Emperor. And Shieldred's probably fine to hang back. Could even go face and ignore Wandering Emperor. Which... Could be risky if they find an answer to Shieldred and then start putting counters on Adversary to gain more life. But if we go face, in combination with Shieldred, we can kill them pretty quickly, although we can maybe just kill them in one attack next turn. So I'll still play it safe here. And then, um, what do we get rid of? Probably just another Denik. Untapped land would have been nice to... Either crack a clue or play a two mana Denik, but so be it. Point falls to seven. And a Brutal Cathar number two goes after Shieldreds. So Adversary can get them back up to ten. Thalia doesn't matter. Can take it. My Gancho is also excellent here. So attack with both creatures. Basically deals 8 and then another Shieldred will do it. Whether or not we kill their Brutal Cathar or play another Shieldred doesn't really matter. I'll just play my own in case I have a protection spell for their Brutal Cathar. And then now we could crack a clue, can use Iganjo, but opponent seems dead to our Shieldred. Awesome! 
All right, so we got to see our Esper Legends deck in action, and there were definitely a few standout cards, mainly Adelin alongside Rafine, which allows us to quickly cycle through the deck with Knife, adding counters to the team, and also getting rid of excess legendaries that we no longer need is a very useful in a deck like this. Then we also got to see Denik be useful alongside Rafine, since we don't mind discarding it and then getting it back out of the graveyard. Also just a fine 2-drop. And then Shieldred at 4 was great. Kind of hard to tell how good Rata Drabic was in the 4-drop slot, because it can have a big impact on the game, but the opponent may just not cast anything to make it obvious that Rata Drabic is being useful if the opponent has a sweeper or a bunch of removal in hand, for instance. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.